Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University. School of Agriculture, SOA. Diploma Postgraduate Diploma Programs. Diploma in Watershed Management, DWM. BNRI 101 Fundamental of Watershed Management. Block 1 Concept of Watershed Management. Unit 1 Introduction to Watershed Management. 1.0 Objectives After going through this unit, you should be able to Times outline the concept of watershed management Times acquaint yourself with the objectives and principles of watershed management Times explain the history and evolution of watershed management and Times enumerate different activities to be undertaken in a watershed project 1.1 Introduction in order to understand the concept of watershed, you may go out when it is raining. You would observe that during rains, water flows here and there and eventually follows a particular path. Finally, it gets collected at a particular point, particularly lowest point in your area, depending on the slope. The area which contributes water and flows to the lowest point resembles the watershed. Have you ever observed the flow of rainwater that falls on the roof of your house? The rainwater falling on a roof always flows through a particular outlet, spout. Taking spout as a point outlet, the area of the roof may be termed as a watershed. If you have separate spouts for different roofs in your house, you may have many small watersheds within your house. The term watershed consists of two words, water and shed. Water occurs in nature mostly in solid, liquid and vapor forms. In watershed, water is considered mainly in liquid form. The word shed refers to the roof of a shed which collects rainwater and drains out. Shed thus can be defined as an area well marked by a boundary which receives rainwater and drains out towards a common drainage point or outlet. In the next unit, role of watershed management, its components, major characteristics and criteria for selection of watershed will be dealt with. Integrated watershed management and the importance of institutional arrangement were also highlighted. One point to definition of watershed point. Watershed is a topographically delineated area drained by a stream system i.e. the total land area above some point on a stream or river that drains down slope to the lowest point. The watershed is a hydrologic unit often used as physical unit, biological unit and a socio-economic political unit for planning and management of natural resources. Watershed may also be defined as a natural unit of land which collects water and drains through a common point called an outlet by a system of drains. Therefore, watershed is the area encompassing the catchments, command and delta area of a stream. The topmost portion of the watershed is known as ridge handle line. Joining the ridge portion along the boundary of the watershed is called as ridge line. A watershed is thus a logical unit for planning optimal development of its soil, water and biomass resources. 1.3 Watershed Management Watershed management is the process of guiding and organizing use of land and other resources in the watershed to provide desired goods and services without adversely affecting soil, water and other natural resources. Watershed management, in the broader sense, means maintaining the equilibrium between elements of natural ecosystem or vegetation, land or water on the one hand and human activities on the other hand. The watershed management programs aim at improving soil health, soil tilt and drainage and achieving efficient use of harvested and stored rainwater for supplemental irrigation and Consequently, enhanced productivity and higher economic returns. From community development point of view, 
watershed management programs aim at controlling flooding, water logging and soil erosion in order to increase agricultural productivity and a more dependable, cleaner water supply for domestic and industrial use. These programs also help in minimizing risk of floods in rural and urban areas. Downstreams, reducing sedimentation and conserving natural resources efficiently and effectively. Watershed management programs strive to improve the lot of the entire farming communities rather than focusing on individual farmers only. 1.3.1 Need of Watershed Management Watershed degradation in the third world countries threatens the livelihood of millions of people and seriously affects the development of a healthy agricultural and natural resource base. The existing natural resource base is fast depleting due to excessive use of the soil and vegetation system by growing livestock and human population. The population growth exerts pressure on forests, community lands and marginal agricultural lands resulting in inappropriate cultivation practices, forest depletion and grazing intensities. They cause serious damage to the environment by excessive sedimentation of river system affecting the stream flow to downstream users. Watershed management has an important role to play in combating the Malthusian effect which states that that population tends to increase faster than the means to feed it. Watershed management programs play an important role in minimizing the Malthusian effect by ecological and economic rehabilitation of misused watershed slopes, revival of natural streams and augmentation of water resources with active support and participation of people. The watershed management programs involve the entire community and natural resources particularly land and water resources. Through water development programs, the influence of above factors needs to be observed as given below. Time socio-economic trend in income generation, employment pattern, household, assets, healthcare education, energy use and impact on women and the landless. Times perceptions, attitudes and behavior of the people towards project activities and their participation in planning and execution of project and management of resource proposed to be developed under the project together with constraints. Times productivity production of crops and forage, changes in cropping pattern and land use adoption or improved cropping practices. Survival and growth of perennial crops on non-arable lands, increase wood and non-wood products and improve livestock milk production. Times improvement of environment by buildup of vegetative cover, reduction of runoff and soil loss, improvement in livestock milk production policy. Times use of land and water in vegetation, animal and environment. Times soil erosion, moderation of floods, alleviation of drought, water availability. In soil on surface and underground storage, availability of fuel, fodder and Food. Times development of institutions for planning and implementation. 1.3.2 Focus of Watershed Management. Watershed programs focus mainly on the following. Times village common lands as well as private lands. Institutionalized community participation. Times sustainable rural livelihood support system. Times decentralized planning and decision making. Times Rich to Valley Treatment Approach Times Integrated and Holistic Development of the Watershed Unit Times Protecting Natural Resources Through Stakeholders' Participation and Times Providing Best Unit for Planning a Development Program 1.3.3 Concept of Watershed Management Watershed Management is based on the concept of sustainability and meeting the Needs of present population without compromising the interests of future generation. The concept of watershed management is important for the efficient utilization of water and other natural resources. 
the concept of watershed management may be expressed in symbolic form by power. P is equal to production of food fodder, fuel, fruit, fibers, fish milk combine on a sustainable basis. Is equal to pollution control. Is equal to prevention of floods. O is equal to over exploitation of resources to be minimized by controlling excessive biotic interferences like overgrazing. Is equal to operational practicability of all on farm operations and follow up programs, including easy access to different locations in watershed. W is equal to water storage at convenient locations for different purposes. Is equal to wild animal and indigenous plant life conservation at selected places. E is equal to erosion control. Is equal to ecosystem safety. Is equal to economic stability. Is equal to employment generation. R is equal to rainwater harvesting. Is equal to recharge of groundwater. Is equal to reduction of drought hazard. Is equal to reduction of siltation in multi-purpose reservoirs. Is equal to recreation. Power is not only important symbolically, but watershed programs bestow real power to the beneficiaries by improving their socio-economic lot. 1.3.4 Benefits of Watershed Management Watershed management is expected to ensure the following benefits. Times controls floods, erosion and sedimentation. Times enhances productivity per unit area, per unit time and per unit of water. Times increases cropping intensity. Times leads to proper utilization of waste lands through alternate land use systems. Times ensures ecological balance. Times maximizes income through integrated farming system and Time stabilizes income even under unfavorable weather conditions. 1.3.5 Objectives of Watershed Management The basic objective of watershed management is to overcome the problems of land and water use based on interdependence of all the resources and therefore must be considered together. The watershed ultimately aims at improving standard of living of common man in the basin by increasing his earning capacity, by providing facilities such as electricity, water for irrigation and drinking water supply, freedom from fear of floods and droughts, etc. Watershed management aims at efficient utilization of the entire resources namely soil, water, crop including plantation, livestock, fishery and human population, etc for sustained prosperity of the watersheds. The overall objectives of watershed development program are outlined below. Recognition of watersheds as a proper unit for utilization and development of all lands. The land should be treated in accordance with its peculiar need and by methods that will control soil erosion, conserve water, encourage wildlife, improve farm income and prevent flood damage to agricultural lands. Times retardation and prevention of floods through small multipurpose reservoirs and other water impounding structures at the streams and in problem areas. Times provision for an abundant water supply for domestic, industrial and agricultural needs. Times minimizing organic, inorganic and soil pollution. Times expansion of recreational facilities i.e. Picnic and camping sites with more Lakes and streams suitable for boating, fishing or swimming. Times utilization of natural local resources for improving agriculture and allied Occupation or industries, small and cottage industries, to improve socio-economic conditions of the local residents and minimizing risks during Aberrant weather conditions Improving infrastructural facilities with regard to storage, transportation and marketing of the agricultural produce. Times setting up small-scale agro-industries. Times improving the socio-economic status of the farmers. Times employment generation. Times encouraging people participation. 
the above objectives can be achieved by planning and implementing the program. In a systematic way with active participation of farmers including constitution of Cooperative Watershed Management Societies The following guidelines may be Followed to achieve the objectives of watershed management Times the implementation program should start from the ridge line of the Watershed to the valley and not on piecemeal basis in isolated patches Times development of both arable and non-arable lands should be done together. Times forest, pasture, cultivable land and waste lands should be treated as interlinked units of hydrological entity. The condition of all lands use has to be improved to meet the demands of increasing human and animal population. Times essentially, all developmental activities are to be carried out on watershed. Basis whole watershed area needs to be covered in planned phases. However, treatment of some lands lying outside the watershed, but geographically contiguous can also be taken up based on socio-economic considerations. 1.3.6 Principles of Watershed Management The main principles of watershed management based on resource conservation. Resource generation and resource utilizes in our times utilizing the land according to its capability. Times protecting productive topsoil. Times reducing siltation hazards in storage tanks, reservoirs and lower fertile lands. Times maintaining adequate vegetation cover on soil surface throughout the year. Times in situ rainwater conservation. Time safe diversion of excess water to storage points through vegetative waterways. Time stabilization of gullies by providing checks at specified intervals and thereby increasing groundwater recharge. Times increasing crop intensity and land equivalent ratio through intercropping and sequence cropping. Time safe utilization of marginal lands through alternate land use systems with Agriculture, horticulture, forestry, pasture systems with varied options and combinations. Times water harvesting for supplemental and off-season irrigation. Times maximizing agricultural productivity per unit area per unit time and per unit of water. Times ensuring sustainability of the ecosystem befitting the man-animal plant water system. Times maximizing the combined income from the interrelated and dynamic crop. Livestock to labor system over years and. Time stabilizing total income. 1.4 History and Evolution of. Watershed Management. Since the advent of civilization, water has always been the most important natural. Resource. Due to limited availability of fresh water its proper management has always been of considerable importance. It has now assumed considerable significance due to phenomenal rise in its demand due to ever-growing population. Earliest water-related activity is mainly aimed at controlling torrents in steep, unstable, mountainous areas with particular emphasis to minimize losses due to floods. The Damage and destruction due to uncontrolled water flows were considered more important than the water shortages. In order to control water flow, water storage structures were evolved leading to the development of irrigation systems. The water storage structures faced siltation problems thereby seriously reducing their capacity. In order to overcome this problem, the soil conservation measures were employed to control soil erosion in the watershed. Full exploitation of the potential of watershed technology began in the beginning of modern era. Since Second World War, watershed management has become a subject of great international interest. Initially, the watershed management concept was introduced in a top down approach with major emphasis to implement the Soil and water conservation measures. In the absence of direct and immediate benefits of soil and water conservation measures, the participation of the watershed 
community could not be ensured which is so essential for the success of watershed projects this led to a paradigm shift to the concept of watershed management the top down approach of implementing soil and water conservation measures was replaced by bottom up approach to ensure creation of a self supporting system essential for sustainability of the watershed while carrying out watershed development activities it has to be ensured that natural resources of watershed particularly soil and water are not adversely affected and ecological balance is not disturbed a number of national and international organizations are engaged in activities related to watershed management such as food and agriculture organization fao international association of scientific hydrology international union for conservation of nature and natural resources international union of forest research organization world meteorological organization etc 1.4.1 watershed development in india watershed activities with respect to hydrological monitoring were initiated in 1942 small watersheds located in eight centers of central soil and water conservation research and training institute cswcrti in 1956 Subsequently watershed based operational research projects ORPs were taken up in different parts of the country in 1974 in order to reduce soil loss increase water availability so as to enhance cropping intensity agricultural productivity and generate employment the central and state governments have undertaken various development programs based on watershed approach as outlined below the ministry of rural development government of india is a front runner in these efforts and has implemented special area development programs for water harvesting i soil conservation and catchment of river valley project the program was initiated during the third five year plan to treat catchment area for reducing silt production rate and subsequent siltation of reservoirs checking soil erosion and consequently improving agricultural productivity the program is being implemented in 27 watersheds covering 17 states including damodar valley corporation area soil and water conservation measures are also being adopted in critically degraded watersheds ranging between 2000 and 4000 ha area two integrated agricultural development in drought prone areas rain fed farming is totally dependent on unreliable and widely variable rainfall resulting in very low agricultural productivity monsoon failure further complicates the situation causing unbearable misery and suffering to the people the drought prone area program dbap of government of india aimed at promoting integrated agricultural development in dry farming regions based on ecologically balanced approach instead of providing temporary relief the program also envisaged setting up of productive infrastructure for providing immediate employment in emergencies to the weaker sections in this program a planned methodology in terms of detailed soil survey hydrological survey and topographic survey was proposed for preparation of the master plan based on this activities such as land use capability classification installation of wells depending up on existing conditions of the area water harvesting programs construction of tanks or check dams in the catchment areas etc were intended il desert development program ddp the program was initiated in 1977 to 78 to control desertification of the desert area by integrating and linking other related state central programs and conserve and harness land water and other natural resources including rainfall for restoration of long term ecological balance The program aims at achieving afforestation, 
with special emphasis on sand dune stabilization and shelter belt plantation and grassland development, soil and moisture conservation and water resources development. This program fully financed by the central government covered about 36.2 m half 131 blocks of 21 districts in five states namely Rajasthan, Haryana, Gujarat, hot arid region, Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh, cold arid region. 4. Himalayan Watershed Management Project in Uttar Pradesh. Himalayan Watershed Management Project funded by the World Bank was taken. Up in 1983 into watersheds namely Nair in Garhwal and Panarin Kumon regions in Uttarakhand covering an area of 2.47 lakh ha. It aimed at minimizing further deterioration of the Himalayan ecosystem caused by depletion of forest. Cover, overgrazing, awful land use and careless road construction. 5. Operational Research Projects on Integrated Watershed Management These projects were taken up in 47 watersheds spread over 16 states, Andhra, Pradesh, Bihan, Gujarat, Haryana, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Orissa, Punjab, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Kampaka, Kerala, Rajasthan, Tamil, Nadu, Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal, in 1983 covering an area of 35,739 ha. With the financial assistance of Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Government of India and under the technical guidance of Indian Council of Agricultural Research, ICA, the projects aimed at developing a program with people participation for arresting the deterioration of environment and building a permanent assets in the form of water, sustainable vegetation and improved productivity of cropped land. 6. National Watershed Development Programme of Rainfed Agriculture NWDPRA The program initiated in 1986-87 in the unirrigated arable lands in 25 states. Mostly had rainfall ranging between 501,125 mm and more. The districts with over 30% area under irrigation were usually excluded. The program was restructured in the 8-5 year plan in order to achieve sustainable production of biomass as well as restoration of ecological balance in the vast rainfed areas of the country. It mainly focused on conservation and utilization of land, water, plant, animal and human resources in a harmonious and integrated manner with low-cost, simple, effective and replicable technology, generation of massive employment and reduction of inequalities between irrigated and rainfed areas. The main activities of the project included Times land and moisture management including optimal cropping system, dry land, horticulture, fodder production and farm forestry. Times contingency seed and planting material stocking. Times training, seminars, study tours for staff and farmers within the state regional, national level. Times adoptive research trials on different crops in small and marginal farmers. Land. Times Procurement, Fabrication and Supply of Survey Equipment and Prototype Implements and Times Preparation of Field Manuals and Publicity Materials The program has been able to achieve the following Times Unified Command Approach of Multidisciplinary Team for Effective Organizational Setup for Effective Implementation of Watershed Development Programs Increased productivity of different crops in both black and red soil regions. By contour farming. Time significant in situ moisture conservation, cropping intensity and productivity. In different farming systems based on contour vegetative barriers. 7. Integrated Wasteland Development Program, IWDP. The program initiated in 1989 aimed at developing wastelands on a watershed. 
basis and mainly focused on silvipasture and soil moisture conservation on wastelands. 8. Integrated watershed management in the catchments of flood-prone rivers. The program was undertaken during fourth five-year plan in eight flood-prone rivers of Gangetic Basin namely Ajoy, Gomti, Punpun, Rup Narya, Sahibi. Sone, Upper Ganga and Upper Yamuna covering watershed area of 16.7 million has spread over the states of Bihar, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal and Union Territory of Delhi. The program aimed at enhancing ability of the watershed by absorbing large amount of rainwater, reducing erosion and consequent silt load in rivers and thus mitigating the effect of floods in productive plains. 9. Integrated Watershed Development Project for Hills and Plains The World Bank projects in Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab and Haryana covering an area of 1.24 lakh are aimed at slowing and reversing degradation of the natural environment through the use of appropriate soil and water conservation practices. 10. Integrated Watershed Development Project, Plains The World Bank project covering an area of 4.331 Akha in Gujarat, Orissa and Rajasthan aimed at slowing down and reversing ecological degradation in a variety of agroecological zones by promoting sustainable and replicable production system. 11. Other Watershed Management Projects Internationally funded watershed management projects are also being implemented in the country. 1.5 Guidelines for Watershed Programs In 1994-95, Ministry of Rural Areas and Employment, Government of India came up with strict guidelines for watershed programs to achieve optimum utilization of the watershed's natural resources, employment generation and overall socio-economic development. Subsequently, Ministry of Rural Development revised the guidelines in 2001 to make them more focused, transparent and easy to follow. The guidelines for watershed development provided a detailed institutional Framework at all levels of implementation, particularly people organizations called the Watershed Association, the Watershed Committee, the self-help groups, the user groups at the village level. The guidelines were further refined with the launch of new initiative Haryali in 2003. Haryali sought to empower Panchayat. Raj institutions, PRIs, both administratively and financially in the implementation of the watershed development programs. The guidelines for Haryali were applicable to IWDP, BAP, DDP and any other program notified by the goal. Common guidelines for watershed development projects were issued by the Department of Land Resources, Ministry of Rural Development in 2008 and R. Based on the following features Equity and gender sensitivity, watershed development projects should be considered as levels of inclusiveness. Project implementing agencies must facilitate the equity processes such as a. Enhanced livelihood opportunities for the poor through investment in their assets and improvements in productivity and income. b. Improving access of the poor, especially women to the benefits. c. Enhancing role of women in decision-making processes and their representation in the institutional arrangements and d. Ensuring access to usufruct, legal, rights from the common property resources for the resource poor. Decentralization Project management would improve with decentralization. Delegation and professionalism. Establishing suitable institutional arrangements within the overall framework of the Panchayati Raj institutions and the operational flexibility in norms to suit varying local conditions will enhance decentralization. Empowered. Committees with delegation to rationalize the policies, continuity in administrative 
Support and timely release of funds are the other instruments for effective decentralization. Facilitating agencies, social mobilization, community organization, capacities. Building of communities in planning and implementation, ensuring equity arrangements, etc. Need intensive facilitation. Competent organizations including voluntary. Organizations with professional teams having necessary skills and expertise would be selected through a rigorous process and may be provided financial support to perform the above specific functions. Centrality of community participation, involvement of primary stakeholders is at the center of planning, budgeting, implementation and management of watershed projects. Community organizations may be closely associated with and accountable to Gram Sabhas in project activities. Capacity building and technology inputs, considerable stress would be given on capacity building as a crucial component for achieving the desired results. This would be a continuous process enabling functionaries to enhance their knowledge and skills and develop the correct orientation and perspectives thereby becoming more effective in performing their roles and responsibilities. With current trends and advances in information technology and remote sensing, it is possible to acquire detailed information about the various field-level characteristics of any area or region. Thus, the endeavor would be to build in strong technology inputs into the new vision of watershed programs. Monitoring, evaluation and learning, a participatory, outcome and impact-oriented and user-focused monitoring, evaluation and learning system would be put in place to obtain feedback and undertake improvements in planning, project, design and implementation. Organizational restructuring, establishing appropriate technical and professional support structures at national, state, district and project levels and Developing effective functional partnerships among project authorities, implementing agencies and support organizations would play a vital role. 1.6 Watershed Management Action Plan Watershed Management Action Plan needs to be prepared for all the arable and non-arable lands including degraded forest lands, government and community lands, and private lands. The following activities may have to be incorporated in the action plan depending up on agroclimatic conditions of the region as well as socio-economic condition of people. Times development of small water harvesting structures such as low-cost farm, ponds, null buns, check dams, percolation tanks and other groundwater. Recharge measures. Times renovation and augmentation of water sources, desiltation of village tanks. For drinking water irrigation. Fisheries development. Times fisheries development in village ponds, tanks, farm ponds, etc. Times afforestation including block plantations, agroforestry and horticultural. Development, shelterbelt plantations, sand dune stabilization, etc. Times pasture development either by itself or in conjunction with plantations. Times land development including in situ soil and moisture conservation measures. Like contour and graded buns equipped with plantation, bench terracing. Hilly terrain, nursery raising for fodder, timber, fuel wood, horticulture and non-timber forest product species. Times drainage line treatment with a combination of vegetative and engineering structures. Repair, restoration and upgradation of existing common property assets and structures in the watershed to obtain optimum and sustained benefits from previous public investments. Times crop demonstrations for popularizing new crops varieties or innovative management practices and Times promotion and propagation of non-conventional energy-saving devices. Energy conservation measures, biofuel plantations, etc. 1.7 Summary 
The watershed is a hydrologic, biological, and socio-economic political unit for the planning and management of natural resources. Times the watershed management programs aim at improving soil health, drainage, and using harvested and stored rainwater efficiently for supplemental irrigation and consequently enhancing productivity and higher economic returns leading to overall socio-economic development of the entire farming community. Times watershed management is based on the concept of sustainability and ecological balance and meeting the needs of present population without compromising the interests of future generation. Times watershed management programs have always received highest priority by the government for long-term agricultural sustainability and socio-economic upliftment of the people. Different watershed management programs funded by national and international organizations have been implemented over the last 50 years aiming at solving region-specific problems in order to implement watershed management programs effectively and efficiently, comprehensive guidelines on technical, financial and institutional setup have been formulated and revised time to time by the expert committee. Thank you. Subscribe to our channel for more updates.